doing today, guys? Welcome back to another day of 7th grade math. This is Mr. Gomez, your favorite teacher in the whole world. And today, we're going to talk about experimental probability of compound events. Now, if you haven't, please take this moment to add and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, link down in the description. And if you haven't seen my other channel, MTV Alex, I'll leave a card right here. You can check it out. I do mountain bike and uh, DIY and some random stuff. So check it out. It's pretty fun. Now, experimental probability of compound events. Previously, we had talked about um, theoretical probability and then uh, of single events, compound events, and also making predictions. Now, on the previous video, we talked about experimental probability of single events, and I'm going to leave a link for that one right here. Now, compound events is it includes two or more simple events it includes two or more simple events now we're still talking about experimental probability so it's actually happening it's actually happened it's not just pretty on paper it's actually the experiment happening again so just like before compound includes two or more simple events and the possible outcomes of flipping a coin are heads and tail for example we have one example the possible outcome for flipping a coin are heads and tails. So basically, you have a coin with two sides. You have heads and tails. Now, it says a spinner is divided into four equal sections, each one of a different color. The possible outcomes, remember, the possible is the total. Because we're still talking about part over total to get the, the, the total fraction. The spinner is divided into four equal sections. So we have a spinner that are red, yellow, blue, and green. If you toss a coin and spin the spinner, there are eight possible outcomes. How do you find the total possible outcomes? Well, just like on uh, theoretical uh, probability, you're going to multiply the total possible outcomes for each one of the uh, different scenarios. So for the coin, we have two possible outcomes, heads and tails. And for the spinner, we have the four different colors. Four times two, four times two is eight. That's how they come up with this total possible outcomes. Now they make it a table, heads and tails. So basically the, the rows are gonna be for the, for the coin and the columns there for the spinner. <laughs> and this is what happens. On the first try, well, when they did this experiment, they did it many different times and the combinations happen like this. So heads and red happen nine times. And for example, tails and blue happen seven times, so forth, so on. Those are the different combinations and how many times those combinations happen. Okay? That's how you read this graph. So, to find the experimental probability that the next trial we have an outcome of tails and blue. So, we're looking for this one right here only. Tails and blue. Tails, blue. Where they cross, that's what you're looking for. It was, uh, find the experimental probability that the next one will be tails and blue. Remember, tails and blue. That's what we're looking for. So first of all, you, we gotta find the total number of trials when tails and blue happen. How many times did that happen? Well, it happened seven times, right there. Now the other part is gonna be the, the time consuming part, especially when you have tables, okay? And they don't give you the total. The next part is going to be find the total number of trials. So this is the time consuming part because you're gonna have to actually add everything up, including that seven. You're gonna have to add everything up right here. That is gonna be the time consuming part, but I, want, I don't want you to skip it. So when you add everything up, we know that the experiment was done, performed 80 times. So just like before, part of our total is going to be 780 right there. 
we can simplify that any further, but if they ask us to convert to percent to decimal, you can just divide to convert percent to decimal. So with this information, we're gonna do a few problems. Right here, we have another table. And it says, a store hands out yogurt samples, and these are the samples, peach, vanilla, and strawberry. Each flavor comes in regular or low fat. So we have peach, regular, peach, low fat, uh, vanilla, regular, vanilla, low fat, and strawberry, regular, and strawberry, low fat. Okay, now it says, each, uh, by 2 p.m., the store was giving out these samples. So this is what they gave out. So if I want to find out how many low-fat strawberry, all I have to do is to go, that, go to that cell. They gave out 55 low-fat strawberry, okay? First of all, number one, what is the total number of samples given out? Total number of samples given out. And like I said, this is gonna be the time consuming part because you're gonna have to add everything. So we have a total of 200 samples given out. When you add them all up, you get 200. Now, they're asking, what is the experimental probability that the next one will be regular vanilla? So we're looking at the regular and vanilla only. This is what, I, what it has, right? So they gave out 19 regular vanilla. So again, that's gonna be the part Part over total. The experimental probability of giving out a regular vanilla will be 19 out of 200. Now, number three, what is the experimental probability that the next sample will be strawberry? Strawberry now. Now, are they asking low fat or regular? Are they specifying that? They're not. So basically, it's anything that is strawberry. It doesn't matter what whatever strawberry is. So to find that, uh, the part on that, you're gonna have to combine the, the two strawberry ones. So the part is gonna be 30 plus 55, which is 85. So the part will be 85 out of how many? 200, 200. very good. Now, can we simplify that? Yes. If we divide both of these by five, we get a better, uh, smaller answer. So on the top we get 17, and on the bottom we get 100. This is really easily converted into a decimal. Or percent. So that's it. So remember, they're looking for strawberry, anything that is strawberry. Now the next one, it says, what is the experimental probability that the next one will not be peach? Not peach. So to find the part, what are we looking for? Anything that is not peach, which is these two and these two. We're gonna combine them all, right? So over here we have 85, and over here we have 51. So when you add these two, you get 85 plus 51, you get 136. That's the part. So this is going to be 136 out of how many? What is the total again? Total number of samples? 200. You can also simplify this. 68. You can also divide this by 2 again. So it's 34 over 50. Right? You can divide that by 2 again. So this is 17 over 25. And that's going to be the final answer. Or if you wanted to know percent, write that. So again, that's how you do these type of problems. Uh, you're gonna find the, the the single event probability for each one of them and then just combine it, just like we did before.
So I really hope that you learned something today. That is it for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We might make another video about a few more samples of this type. So stay, make sure you hit the notification bell on so you get the notification when the video comes out. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so. Subscribe to my other channel, MTV, MTV Alex. That is it for this one, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.